Mr. Connor. How are you doing today? Doing very, very well. Excited to be here, man. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm super pumped about this episode. I know we've spent a lot of time together on Clubhouse and I've heard your thoughts on a lot of different matters. And I figured what better time than today to sit down and go over your thoughts on competition, the state of the world today and introduce my audience to you. So why don't we just start with that? So who are you? Where are you? And what do you do? Welcome to the Prime People Podcast, where we cover all things that got us to where we are today, our team building strategies, the marketing and sales tips that we've learned through thousands of transactions, productivity tips, ways to really just hold yourself accountable to accomplishing what you want to accomplish, and all things content creation, personal development, and not to mention we have some of the best guests on the planet. I'm down in San Diego. Um, I've, I'm originally from here. And about 10 years ago is when I had uh, um, started at a real estate company called Trulia up in San Francisco. Mm. Um, and so I was fortunate to be an early employee there in that, um, you know, we, I was there before we went public. I was there before the Zillow merger and acquisition. So I've actually been uh, under Zillow Group for the last decade. And my theme has, has always been uh, working with uh, the real estate industries. Uh, I'd say some of the biggest teams and most inspiring and, and innovating agents. And so I've always been kind of obsessed with you know, the operations, the secret sauce and, and the details of what people exactly like yourself are, are doing just, uh, you know, to succeed. And so, um, you know, it was actually just uh, what really is, is relevant to what brought us here today in, in a way. It was, it was just like a year and a half ago when I decided to start uh, docu-making um, and really just clicking record on some of the, the conversations and the relationships that I was already getting to you know, meet with and learn from. So that has been, uh, you know, giving me even more conviction in this journey because it's led to so many, you know, more connections, learning so many more things and just having a lot of fun along the way. That's amazing. It's an interesting world that we live in these days where you can think of life like that, right? Like you're, you're in an interesting position, you're at a company that's doing things that have essentially never been done before and realizing at the same time that, you know, th there's more to the conversation than just the fact that, Hey, I got a job and I'm working at a company or like, man, I'm going to document this. Cause who knows where this journey is going to go. I mean, what's your background? Like before you did all that, like, where did you grow up? What did you want to be when you grew up? Yeah, it was real estate is uh, always been sort of in the family and in, in, a, in a direct and indirect way. Um, and so I knew I always wanted to kind of be in that space. I, I have always had kind of, uh, you know, I've been sort of like the chip on my shoulder, having been like a smaller but very competitive guy. I was always playing every single sport growing up. Um, I still consider myself incredibly competitive today. Mm -hmm. um, and I think some of that has translated, but generation I am, I'm 34. And then, you know, going to school and graduating in the Bay Area and Silicon Valley, it was very much technology as well. So real estate and tech kind of overlapped. Um, and that's how I stumbled into uh, into the Bay Area. And before that was at a real estate tech company right before um, what has become you know, a huge part of, of my career. But maybe a, a fun story that um, I, haven't, I haven't shared too many times, but er early in my career at San Francisco, I uh, realized was at a, a bad company with just bad leadership around people that I did not sort of aspire to align with and, and was really only a few months into um, like my career. I just mm -hmm. signed an expensive lease in, in San Francisco. Um, but, but quit with zero plan um, and just didn't, uh, you know, have any necessarily, you know, idea of how I was going to make ends meet. But uh, the one thing that I took away from college that I could do really, really well to make money was actually play poker. Uh, so the first thing I did was I flew to Vegas and uh, I pretty much took 80 to 90% of the money I had to go towards, you know, bills and uh, sort of doubled down. And I, I won one comp, one, uh, one tournament there. And then made a, a final table, another tournament. So that, that gave me a little bit of runway to, to take some time into finding, you know, a place I wanted to, you know, to work at. And uh, at the time was, if you know, like commercial real estate, if you know, a uh, co-star and LoopNet. So sure I do. was, uh, I was interviewing in a, you know, really far round with them. This is back in like 2009 or 10. And uh, they're right next to the San Francisco Giants ballpark. And I was, I was all excited because I was, I thought I was kind of locked in as a young sort of naive guy. And um, felt like I was going to at this point be getting a raise with this sort of nice, you know, company and all that. And uh, when they told me no, I felt like it was, you know, this huge, huge, like the worst thing that could have happened to me, you know, in, in my uh, in my career and at the start of my foundation. But 
it's truly something I can look back on now and, and genuinely feel like it was the best thing that could have happened to me because it it quite literally put me in the position that that I'm at today, which is you know happier than than I've been able to imagine before. I swear you're on another level because you just answered the last question that I typically ask guests on this episode and how has failure shaped your life? I think that's a very poignant part of the conversation. I remember, you know, I was in a position where I had to let go of a builder and, you know, I chose to walk away from that relationship, a hundred plus homes to maintain the integrity of my team and some things that were happening there. And, you know, I think people can get caught up thinking that, you know, oh my gosh, this is my entire world right now. And it's going to end because I didn't get that raise or I didn't get that promotion or somebody didn't tell me it was my turn. I feel like I would recruit you if you were any closer to us <laughs> up here in Canada, because I look for people with intelligence, integrity, and energy, and you've got those three things. What would you say would be your primary skill set, or, you know, what do you love to do? Yeah, I like that you asked that because I don't, I, I, I doubt you got a chance to see this. I shot you an email like maybe less than an hour um, before this, and it almost clearly shows the things I like to do. And that, that is pretty much, um, if I back up and, and give the context why, I think this will better answer. So, so in the last 18 months, I had sort of described, you know, going through this journey of, uh, of building in public sort of, you know, documenting our own journeys, telling stories, collaborating, uh, learning, and sort of having this growth mindset, but specifically doing that with like content uh, across social. Um, that to me, I already knew was kind of something that could provide, you know, opportunities or, you know, be, be fun or meet people or whatever it is. But um, I, without a doubt in this last year and a half have, you know, it's something I always learned about, or we always read about the, the power of, 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 brand or the power of you know uh, building relationships or relationship equity I like to call it but in this last year and a half uh, this this process of like content and existing and showing up on on all these platforms like Clubhouse and LinkedIn and Instagram um, it has led to so many interesting conversations and opportunities that I really did not you know feel like I, I think uh, I would have believed just you know a little over a year ago and so it's, it's something that uh, that process of like content and distribution, I'm obsessed with. And I know this is where we've definitely talked a little bit about it in Clubhouse, but like, I think it applies to every, every, pretty much every individual. I think it applies to every business. I think it's something that is evolving and, and just, uh, you know, an interesting space. And so I sent you a clip from one of your previous episodes that I thought was inspiring and interesting and insightful because uh, that, that's kind of my real specific formula is uh, I like to do interviews exactly like this, not only for the one-on-one -on -one relationship, yeah. um, but then it feeds my content strategy. I take those little moments, those micro content pieces, and I post them across social. Um, and that's really what I think is, is something I, I feel a lot more uh, you know, comfortable or stronger at than a lot of other people's. This process of breaking down you know, content and strategically distributing uh, to create meaningful outcomes and meaningful results. Um, not in some sort of a hacky funnel way. Yeah, you're, you're very much tangible that way. I think one thing that drew me to you when we first started paneling and doing things together and being on Clubhouse, this is the nice thing about the Clubhouse application is you can't really hide on that app, right? Yeah. Is you hear people's intent in their voice. You hear when they're trying to get you on the funnel. Oh, click my bio, do this, this, this. And like, I tell people click my bio because I have PDFs I've put there from things yeah. that I've brought up two or three or four times that I keep having to send out again. It's more just a system, but- there's others where you go down that funnel next thing you know they're trying to sell you a course and then another course it was never that with you it was always ideation and i think i really want to stick on this topic of your superpower because i think it's powerful to the audience to understand how content creation ideation distribution isn't as scary as they think it is right i think they think oh i have to have a production team or i have to do this or i have to do that where in reality, it's just another method of communication. Just like if I was having lunch with you and you're telling me something that inspires you or somebody that you linked up with, those bits and pieces that you're going to share with me, you're actually doing at scale. And I can jump in and out of it whenever I want because I happen to be in a meeting before this. So I didn't see your email. Maybe I jump on your feed leader. I'm catching up with you. I'm like, I follow you. I support you because we line up in a lot of different ways. Oh, Connor shared this. Oh, wow. I never thought of something like that that adds something to my life. How am I going to bring something back to your life? We're on a podcast. You and I get it, right? Because we're doing it. And I think we're, we're always looking for that evolution of how can I do it better? And the growth is kind of the fun part of our journey. Mm -hmm. 
how would you coach somebody that was maybe trying to do what you're doing, but doesn't really know where to start? Yeah, really like that question. And, um, you know, I think you, you nailed the part that resonates with me the most on it, it starts with understanding that this is just another way to communicate and to exist. Um, and so there's kind of this commitment that it starts with. And so I remember, and you, you probably um, do too, then like uh, it was in 2009 where I was communicating with real estate brokers with a fax machine. And it wasn't like weird. It wasn't like a joke. Like that was just the way that we were doing it in a lot of ways. And, and, uh, and so I think as that has evolved to landline phones, to uh, you know, emails and text messages, and now video and slash social, um, I think it is just the way that we're communicating. And so I think it starts with almost this commitment to, if you uh, have read Simon Sinek's The Infinite Game, but this, to me, I had to kind of, instead of looking at it as like, oh, I'm going to go for X amount of followers. I'm going to go for X amount of results or anything like it. It was just this, okay, I'm not showing up. I'm not existing. And I want to commit to start showing up and existing on these platforms. But there was no like measurable or, or anything like that. This was just the way moving forward, just like we're going to use a phone or we're going to use something moving forward. Um, I wanted to start using video and I wanted to start showing up on these five, six, seven social media apps um, that I think are most relevant. So I think it starts with the commitment to like, this is a new way of communication indefinitely and forever. And then the second thing that was really, I think, more tactical and helpful for me is, is this tipping point of um, really another commitment, but a cadence or a frequency um, of showing up. So uh, for me, it was daily. I wanted to actually post something on the on what I considered in my world the big three at the time, the Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And there were no other rules. It could be a screenshot of a tweet. It could be a photo of, of me and the kids on a walk. It could be a video of an interview or anything. Um, but I kind of let, told, gave myself that one rule of, existing once a day um, on you know the apps and so I that's what I've seen uh, answer a question and I'm sure there's a couple layers deeper to that but the when people are going from like not creating content not posting but they want to they see the value to me it's that tipping point of just like working out I see you and I really align with like I think we have the same type of garage gym doing a lot of the same type of workouts um, the same way people brush their teeth every single day. Like if you can get to that place where you see the value to do it daily or consistently, um, then it becomes so much easier. That's, you know, the hard part is at first you, you pretty much don't see it. You almost don't believe in yourself. There's almost a lot of doubt. And then you kind of go through this, this kind of this no man's land where the first month or maybe a few months or longer, like you're getting no social validation if, if anything people are questioning your sanity and people you know it starts to become uh, challenging to be consistent but once you get you know I'll, I'll pause the, I'll end this part with a story is uh you know once you get moments like this it's very very energizing so um just a week ago got a dm from a C ceo in our industry like that is is, is easy has a multi-million dollar exit at a, a real estate SaaS company and is working on other ventures, very much someone I would enjoy getting coffee with, um, you know, and learning and, and collaborating with. And so he had reached out to me and saying, hey, I've been watching your videos for the last year. Would love to buy you coffee. Would love to connect and talk to you about XYZ and how we can maybe help and so on. And so it's like, and, and he didn't, I didn't know there was a single like, a single comment, a single any indicator that that, that sort of parasocial relationship was being built but once you get a message like that, it's just so energizing to keep going. So hopefully that was the easy three steps is like commitment to long-term communication and just the new way, um, commitment to a cadence of showing up once a day or once a whatever, and then finding those moments that are energizing that, that are your why. I love that breakdown. I actually think it's very tangible because it's equated to driving a car. A lot of people get confused about this business uh, and don't necessarily understand why they're doing it, but they know they have to just like when, you know, you get your license and people are usually excited to drive a car for the first time, but they don't get in and get paralyzed by all of the buttons and everything that has to do with the car. They learn to put the seatbelt on then they put mm -hmm. the key in the ignition and maybe they blow a stop sign by accident, but then they figure it out the next time. Right. It's just these little iterations, same thing with these platforms, you know, people again will question your sanity when you start doing something different. That's usually a sign of progress when the people who aren't yeah. actually doing it or criticizing you or trying to 
you know, stop that progress, it's usually an indication that you're doing something of impact or of value, right? And you want to make sure you have a good tribe of people around you to help support you. And if you are about to walk off a cliff, they're going to stop you. But yeah, you know, we did a builder pitch meeting actually right before this. And we were talking about the value of what we do. And I'm like, it's not putting a sign up. We're not even really real estate agents anymore. This isn't a sales office or, or sales company. I'm like, we're, we're a branding and media company. Like we're disguised as a real estate brokerage, but what my real value is the platform, the connections, the profile that we built. I literally pulled up my Instagram, pulled up my stories and started going through the people that watch my stories. And I'm like builder, mortgage agent, real estate agent, developer, this guy owns a local <laughs> business. I'm like, so you list your property with me. These are the people that are going to be looking at your property daily. And they're not looking at you. They're looking at our stuff and they've known me for 20 years. So if I say yeah. something about your product, it comes with some sort of weight, right? And I think that's where I love how you broke it down for people is, are you willing to communicate the way that people want to be communicated to these days? You mentioned funnels earlier. We align on that as well. Zero funnels. I don't even use scripts. I yeah. don't like them. I don't like listening presentations. I like yeah. talking to somebody like they were talk to me, establish a relationship if we can help each other and collaborate. If we can't, that's okay. Maybe there's not a business transaction there, but I bet you there's some other aspect of life where we can still be friends and we can still yeah. build a better world together, right? Yeah, the, uh, you know, I got to interview, if you've met Ricky Carruth out of Alabama, and he, he has this phrase of relationships over transactions. And I, I so much agree that if we can, you know, it flip the, sometimes the metric from like sales or measurable dollars like that to thinking of it more as like relationship equity or trust equity. It's like, um, so I, I personally actually, I don't sell a single product or service like internally, externally on the side or whatever. And, and I think that's more than okay if and when people do, mm -hmm. but I think, but I think sometimes detaching from that exactly like you're describing and instead thinking about how, how you can just make deposits into that relationship equity. And, and then it'll lead to, you know, Justin knowing Susan who wants to buy my, you know, book or whatever it is, but it's, it's, it's something that I think, uh, is almost, you know, simple to understand, but way, way harder to actually do, you know, in the content. Just like content creation seems very yeah. simple, but it's <laughs> difficult to do. So a couple quick practical tips. So how do you shoot your content? How do you chop it up and how do you distribute it? Like actually? Yeah. Awesome. Um, pretty much anything and everything, all the above I've done myself hands-on. So I'll, I'll start with um, some of the specifics and where I'm kind of landing today. But I had initially started with just recording on Zoom in a silo, like DMing someone, asking if we can chat for 10 minutes, record. And then I was just taking that into a, a video editor that I would just Google and pay either free or 10 bucks a month or whatever, and very like basic editor. So like a year and a half ago, I Googled, how do you edit a video? Like very, mm -hmm. very based um, ground zero. And, and so I was taking those micro clips because um, maybe to back up a step, a second, give uh, some context of where my mind was at is I wanted to put myself in a position to have more content than I basically know what to do with. Like I wanted to be in a position where I have more content than I have ability to actually edit and post. You kind of hear a lot of these scenarios where, um, you know, and this is actually how I felt to be specific. I wasn't very comfortable with coming up with like new creative, like, you know, insights or tips or um, ideas to share. Um, I'm still to this day, not comfortable looking at the camera by myself and like talking. Um, and, and, you know, I pretty much, again, really wanted to put myself in a position for consistency, not to just have to like have these sporadic, you know, booms of content and then nothing. And so the, the interview, like kind of vodcast model, I knew could feed my micro content. If I could, I didn't even necessarily care about I still to this day don't have a formal podcast or a show where I store all these conversations somewhere. It's like an awful mistake, but I've so much for the other side. I want those 30 seconds, those 90 seconds that are um, in, insightful and inspiring, those micro pieces that I can then post um, on all the places. So going back to my process, instead of using Zoom now, um, I started playing with everything from StreamYard, going live on LinkedIn plus Facebook, um, Instagram is now my favorite just because it's so like mobile, simple. I'm very unorganized and sloppy. So I just kind of like the simplicity of it. Um, and then I'll download the Instagram live, um, which you and I think have, have, we've scheduled in like a week or two. Um, and then um, I'll just pretty much uh, plug that into my editor and look for those moments that I can share. 
Um, and if I format it in a certain way, then I can share it on Instagram, share it on LinkedIn, share it on Facebook, TikTok, and repurpose it into an email newsletter where I'm showing the thumbnail and my last 10 posts. So I really wanted to think about stretching this content in my efforts, actually, um, as far as possible, because initially it was really a one-man show, but uh, most recently I've hired uh, two editors. Um, thinking about how to scale that process. You ever heard of the app called Descript? Yes. And you like it? I do. I didn't actually play with it a ton. I mean, yeah. cause there's so many like between the lists here. Um, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't play with it a ton. I, I have still, I feel like I bounce around a lot. Yeah. So do I, we use the creative cloud here just cause we do for the production work that we do for the company. So it's just easier for them to use that, to do what they do. Um, I have heard for what you're looking to accomplish when you're trying to turn to podcasts and longer form content and email templates and stuff like that might be helpful. I do, I'm on a selfish level. I'm curious about StreamYard. I almost bought it today to use for this podcast because, you know, we're using Zoom right now. The quality is not ideal. Would you advise using StreamYard or what were your thoughts on that software? Um, yes. Uh, I thought it was very, very like clean, user-friendly. They have a nice like back studio stuff where, you know, so if you're collaborating with like five, six people, or I did everything from like rapid fire five, 10 minutes each and you cycle through eight people or something, or mm -hmm. you can even bring like, I think six people on the screen now, um, or wow. four people, but, um, so there's a lot you can do also with like, you know, sort of titles across the bottom, like saying, this is the so-and-so podcast or your logo in the top right. So I like StreamYard. Um, but as far as like my live reach, I wasn't hitting as much across, um, you know, Facebook and LinkedIn combined, um, even on the post production play. But on Instagram, it seems to be more uh, reach for the, for the live part. But I, 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 again, still my mind's more about optimizing for the micro clips. Um, so however, you can download from there, which you can download from StreamYard. Yeah, I think of the synergy between our conversation around Clubhouse and what you're saying now. I mean, you don't always have to host the party, right? You don't always have to be the one that launches the podcast. Same thing with the Clubhouse rooms. Like, I like supporting people rather than being the one hosting the daily room because I just don't have the bandwidth or the capacity to do it. I host two rooms. One is a 30-minute just quick rip uh, through Canadian real estate market. I get a lot of value from it, hearing what's happening in the major markets because it's going to trickle down here. And then the Monday room, um, but you know, I find I'm on the same page as you. I don't always think that you have to do everything because, oh my gosh, everybody else is doing it, right? I, right. I guess at what point did you identify or, or how did you become so self-aware about that? Because it's an easy world to get caught up thinking, I got to be here and I got to do this and just get overwhelmed that you don't do anything. Yeah, it's definitely been a little bit of a journey because before I even started putting myself sort of out on social, um, I was... I had always been dabbling, whether it was with different projects and ventures or people even. So like um, there, there have been a number of influencers in different industries that I've worked with directly, but behind the scenes, whether that was through with and through content creation or uh, with content distribution. So even just like understanding the little nuances of LinkedIn, um, working with, uh, you know, Shay Robottom, she's got like 600,000 followers on that, but trying to learn all the little things with all the different platforms there's a uh, iconic is an art canvas company yeah. They're a, a Gary Vee company. So I worked with them out of LA. So um, just trying to almost get my MBA through a lot of these other like influencers and, you know, business uh, practitioners really. And so that kind of put me in a spot where I felt like I had some clarity on, okay, my, here are my sort of like personal brand pillars. Here's what I have the resources to actually do consistently and so I, I, I feel like I had some kind of a running start in that sense, but I, I, I very much want to emphasize that I'm always looking at this as a learn by doing. I think you and I are both actually into jujitsu as well. So we like are. taking this, okay, so taking this white belt mentality, right? And just thinking, I want to always figure out how I can get to the next level and that there's always another level. And, and um, sometimes it's, it's, uh, it's um, I think, you know, exciting to see even like, exciting and cringy to see some of the things I was doing a year and a half ago versus what, you know, what I'm able to do today. I know the vibe. I think it was Hicks and Gracie. Somebody asked him like, what is jujitsu? And he's like, I do this, you do that forever. <laughs> right. That's the quote that really sticks with me. And it's same thing with this business, right? You can go and make money. And if all you care about is money, you're going to be disappointed because there's always somebody that makes more than you. There's already somebody that's doing something different, but if you're always growing, and evolving and, and sharpening your sword it, it's the five rings right it, it's the journey it's it's the path and i do respect you quite a bit for that 
So when you're out there searching, right, and you're searching for those people and you're trying to get your MBA, how do you identify the people versus the snake oil salesman? Because we know in this world, there's a very easy for everybody to have a platform. What, what draws you to somebody to, to really want to dig in and, and look at them as somebody, you know, that could potentially impact your journey? Yeah, I, I like that because uh, I don't know if you are familiar with Naval or follow Naval on Clubhouse. He's the founder of Angel List, um, but he was asked a very similar question last night. And so I'm, I don't want to say that I'm great at doing this. This is what I'll aspire to be like and how I, I have kind of tried to think about it. But um, in two ways, on, on one hand, like just through feeling out, um, it, not necessarily putting the person on a pedestal, right? So like I'm, we, I might admire, you know, uh, John Smith, but um, as we as we pretty much meet a lot of these people that are either celebrities or influencers or whatever it is, um, we realize that we all have like similar you know flaws and imperfections, and they're maybe not as creative and amazing as we thought they were going to be on the spot or whatever it is or disciplined or whatever it is that we've kind of romanticized in our mind. So trying to let go of like putting that pressure on a person or the relationship I have with that person and more isolating like the virtue that they exemplify the most. So is it, is it you know, the, the discipline that you have in your morning workout routine that I want to sort of aspire to, to be like? Is it the way that you, um, I think the tone and the way that you speak on you know, Clubhouse or in public speaking or in groups of others? Like, and so I think just like isolating some of the virtues and saying, okay, that is something I want to be more like and then getting closer to it. So that helps, I think, keep it from, getting any type of overpressure, but um, on the snake oil salesman and kind of some people who do have like bad intent. And I've actually heard of like real scams happening on Clubhouse, like even recently, sure. like um, I think I tried to, number one, never put ourselves in a position, right? Where you're, you're ever going to be overextended or losing more than you can ever lose. And I take that mentality into investing in stocks or whatever topic it is, um, you know, poker as a background, but but I think, uh, you know, I'm very much into this like quantity approach versus being super selective and slow and methodical. So um, I mentioned I'm a little bit sloppy and organized and that, I think some of that transfers into a lot of areas um, for, for better and for worse. So um, like, to, I think to the question here, I'm trying to meet a few hundred people, like a few hundred new people that I do think I would kind of want to a little bit be like, um, but I recognize 120 of them I might realize are, you know, there's only so much to, to, to learn from, or there's only, maybe they don't have as good an intent as I originally thought or whatever it is. So like, yeah. um, I'm thinking a little bit more of uh, sheer quantity and, and uh, you know, um, just kind of trying to, you know, reach, reach a network and relationships through that way. Yeah. And I, you only know by trying, I mean, ultimately yeah. you didn't really know me that in depth before we started these conversations on clubhouse even now I could have emailed you 45 minutes before the podcast being, all right, this is the framework. We're going to drive them down this funnel. And then I'm going to sell them this at the end, in which case it may have been a very different conversation, but I think the willingness to enter the fray and not be afraid to adjust within it is, is the beauty, right? I think jujitsu teaches both of us that, you know, of how to be under duress pressure, make adjustments, you know, not get into your own head or overthink things. I love what you said about not putting these people on a pedestal. I've listened to Naval's podcast, actually phenomenal okay. podcast. And, you know, understanding that these people happen to be in the position that they're in, but the ones that are real quite often give more than the ones that are the snake oil salesmen. And the other side of that coin, I'm glad you brought it up for people on applications like Clubhouse, or they're on Instagram, and they just look at somebody's follower account that was purchased, and they don't know that. And they're making life decisions based off advice from these people that aren't real, right? They're just a fabric of their imagination, because they're looking for that direction. I don't think anybody is in a position where somebody else can tell them, hey, again, I'm going to reference a Seth Golden book, um, what to do when it's your turn. Nobody gets to tell you it's your turn. Mm -hmm. I think the confidence that you're instilling in people through this conversation is the ability for them to go out and say, you know what, it is my turn. And this is what I want to do. And yeah, Justin's not perfect. He's got some craziness to what he does. But there's these aspects of him that I think maybe are flaws of mine. And then I'm coming to this conversation, I'm seeing in your eyes and in the way that you speak that you have a lot of intent and I can be a fire hose of information. My brain moves way faster than my mouth. But when I meet people like you, you know, I espouse to have that stoicism and that ability to think before words exit my mouth, because the words that we say do have an impact on the people around us. So I appreciate you 
you know, sharing those insights with us because I think there's a lot of value for the audience there. Yeah, I appreciate you saying that. I mean, it's something I still uh, feel like I'm so much learning as I go and in, in all of this. And um, there have been countless mistakes over this last year and a half where I would have maybe done something differently, but um, for sure, just like, you know, leaning into the relationships with zero expectation, but figuring out how I can actually, you know, give value in a way. And that, that phrase I think has become so cliche in places like Clubhouse that, yeah. that I'll get real specific with it. I don't even instead, when I reach out to an influencer or a business like, like Iconic or like, um, like um, individuals, I, I don't even reach out to them and be like, hey, how can I add value? How can I this or that? I very specifically, you know, look at and think about what is it that their business is doing? What are they trying to do? And how can I start acting as if and just take action um, and, uh, you know, pretty much, you know, fill the gaps that they seemingly have as if we're already, you know, collaborating and working together and then just give it to them and show them whether that's, you know, video editing or content or some other skill set that we have um, and, and essentially have zero expectation that they even reply to my email. And so there have been people, you know, maybe I spent hours or time or whatever it is and you get zero back. But I think if you have that zero expectation, it, it helps um, prevent this, you know, need to find who's, who's in it or not, but really just allows you to build relationships and see where it goes. You, you just brought up a point that we're going to dig into for a second. People seldom give without the expectation of getting something back. Where do you think people miss the mark with that? I mean, I think I, it's understandable because we all have our agenda that, you know, we, we maybe consciously or subconsciously want to happen. And so um, I think, you know, maybe if someone claims to be genuinely 100% unbiased then they're that woke and just a monk that doesn't feel that. But like, I think even in whatever it is that we're trying to do, we are, I think, you know, constantly thinking about how this positions us, how this benefits yeah. what we're trying to do. And not that there's anything wrong with that, but I think it's kind of the discipline to recognize it and, and sort of the, you know, the discipline to position or, you know, be patient with it. Um, you know, that that's kind of the hard part, but um, maybe some people are less, uh, you know, either just, I guess, aware that they're, you know, thinking about themselves that much in the conversation or in the equation. Um, or they're just uh, less patient, you know, long-term or some combination. Yeah, no, that's a great answer. Um, what are you working on right now in your world? So you've been down this journey, been down this path, what excites you or what are you devoting like 10 to 20% of your brain to that maybe isn't something super important right now, but you think maybe coming down the pipeline? Yeah, um, there's all different kinds of like uh, directions. My, my brain starts racing with that one. Um, but in like the world of business and content and marketing, I've, I had, you know, in the last, in 2020, I was sort of what I cons considered, you know, very casual about my approach and collaborating and content and systems around that. Um, so in 2021, I've been, I've, I've just seen so uh, much benefit, opportunity, energy, and excitement from it that I'm trying to find ways to not only, you know, give myself a goal of having an actual hundred plus interviews, um, giving myself goals of, you know, building an actual, you know, team that I can remove myself from certain parts of the production. So I'm really trying to kind of double down on, you know, relationships and, and content and I'm just learning in that process, but still don't have, you know, like an e-course or a consulting thing to sell. So um, I'm just kind of doubling down on, on the relationships. Yeah. I don't think you necessarily need one either. Right. I think the yeah. journey and sharing the journey, a lot of times there's more value in that. And you know, I was having this conversation actually with a, a YouTuber that I look up to quite a bit because I'm on a personal level doing a lot of content. This is going to live on my YouTube channel. It's evergreen. It's, you know, me trying to provide values and insights from the relationships that I have. I'd have this conversation with you for 45 minutes driving home. So why not yeah. film it? Why not put it out there? Yeah. But at the same time, like when I'm going, having this conversation with these guys, like, well, you know, what is your specific niche? You know, this is going to be your topic so that you can monetize. I'm like, I don't want to monetize. I'm happy. Like, <laughs> I have everything I need. And I do feel like when I watch content myself, again, not that there's anything wrong with it, because I'm totally fine if you want to make it a business. But I guess, how would you recommend somebody like myself navigate content creation? Or I guess I'm looking for some feedback now that you know me a little bit in terms of, you know, what value I can bring to a platform like a YouTube. Well, YouTube, I'll be real specific on. I am, uh, that's like, 
my complete like just naive to how to succeed on YouTube. So mm -hmm. I've like pretty much stored a few videos there. Um, but when it comes to like video distribution, um, are you posting on places like LinkedIn? Like the videos that you have on Instagram, are you are you yeah. posting there? Are oh. you? Sorry, I just ripped my headphones out of the mic. That happened. <laughs> um, yeah, I am. So I, I'm repurposing a lot of the content. Like I am trying to do it natively in the right format for LinkedIn. But you know, my my strategy isn't as dialed in as it should be because I know LinkedIn is a very powerful platform. I think again, probably just a self defeating fear. But I used it imperfectly for so many years that every time I do something, I feel like it's such a hill to climb to rebuild it back to you know where it should be. Yeah, maybe that was real, like in the weeds for a second, just my curiosity. But um, yeah, but zooming back out to your question, and maybe while I, um, because I don't think I do know. Yeah, like. I know you, I think I know you well as a character. I'm not sure I know in terms of like to give you quality advice on what you could do with your content for positioning for where you're trying to go. But I do have a very specific um, piece of like an idea that I am passionate about. Maybe while I start to explain it, I don't know if you're able to even do this while we're on, but like that email go will very, it. it'll, that email that I sent, if you're able to find it from like an hour ago, it'll give you a really clear a visual of what I'm uh, describing. But you're, you're going, you're, you're, you know, you're spending and investing a lot of time, energy, and resources into uh, the podcast, right? Into these collaborations and these recorded conversations. And and uh, number one, I think I agree with you, making sure it's like, you know, people you enjoy having conversations with, you could infinitely do this recorded or not recorded. That I think is the real win. Um, but I think there are so many powerful moments in those conversations that people just don't get to see or hear out of, out of just, the you know unlucky timing or serendipity of being on the platform or getting you know i didn't even actually know you interviewed kyle whistle like yeah, yeah. i'm down here in san diego That's um awesome. and so and so i think you know one often like i think if you're going through 90 percent of the hard part of you know lining up these collabs doing the recording having the actual video asset itself i think you're 90 percent home where if you can you know clip these moments that are insightful, interesting, funny, et cetera. And then share that in the places where people are hanging out, which is, you know, like Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, and in your email newsletter and stuff. Then I think it helps actually squeeze the juice of the proverbial lemon here of what you've created in your content. And so um, I think, I don't, again, know how much that necessarily positions for what you're trying to do in the future, but I think it takes what you're already doing and amplifies a lot more of those efforts. Well, I have a dude. Can you see the screen? Yep. Perfect. There you go. You know what you do well too. And, and it's, you're telling stories. I think you've learned this strategy is like, you don't just say like, Oh, one of my agents, this, when you, and this is like one of the most important things I've learned in sales is you're referring to individuals by name. You're telling their background and you're telling what they do. Like, okay, if you're watching this, like learn from him, learn from Justin, like, this is smart. This is, when you can tell stories, when you actually start to human, I'm not so like it's, an extra, it's an extra piece of content that when not only yeah. you post, it's for your audience, but then like generally Kyle's audience will see it or he'll reshare in his stories or those kinds of things. And it, it kind of, again, yeah, takes that content you've already created and stretches it a little bit further. Yeah, that's money. No, I appreciate that. I hate looking at myself on camera as much videos I do actually produce. <laughs> and so I didn't play the whole clip. I appreciate that. It's thoughtful. Um, I have an intern actually sitting in an office over there and Perfect. all he's doing is taking all of my past episodes, trimming them into portrait, square and landscape, 30, 60, 15 seconds clips. So mm -hmm. I kind of know where they live. Um, the only thing I'm not doing is the actual text overlays on them, but I, I love the concept too. And it's funny because we went through a whole batch of them he did the other day and I don't like the framing. I don't necessarily like the way we have them set up. So we had to go through that process to realize, okay, this is what I kind of needed to look like for it to match what I want to accomplish. But mm -hmm. we only figured it out by doing the work, right? So, you know, I, I definitely want to honor your time. We're 245 now. We got a hard out at 245. I'm going to give you my platform. Where am I driving people to so they can come and follow your journey? Yeah. So, I mean, I like to be anywhere that, you know, most people are. So uh, I don't even have a site or again, thing to drive people to, but um, I'm mostly on, you know, Instagram, Clubhouse, LinkedIn, Facebook, and and have an email um, that I send out. So anywhere that people can reach out, I'm always happy to connect. And really just uh, appreciate your time, man. It's, it's been uh, good to catch up and definitely looking forward to more conversations with you on Clubhouse.
No, I appreciate it, brother. Yeah, and he responds in the DMs on Instagram. So go blow him up, <laughs> show him some love and support that content. Last thing, I'll use the Tim Ferriss question. If you had a billboard that everybody in the world would see long after you're gone, what would that billboard say? I think it would be the point is to be happy because, you know, I think a lot of times people get lost in the sauce on, you know, making money or measuring certain metrics and doing certain things. But um, really, really, I think, uh, you know, the why of we're all here and why we should be, uh, you know, what should be our North Star is, is to be happy. Amen, brother. Oh, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you. And I'm sure we will roll in person one day. Absolutely. Excited right. for it. So you dude, who do you train with? I didn't even ask you that. Um, so it's actually, uh, there, it was a coach that's at Alliance Jiu Jitsu that, cool. um, was, was coming up and, and I was, I was doing a little bit of no gi and gi. That's exciting. I trained with a bunch of guys here in London. I bet you there's some connections between those two. Yeah, Alliance. Seriously. It's a great gym. So awesome, brother. It was great chatting with you and I'll catch yeah. up with you on the house. You as well. It's All fun. right. See you, brother. Bye. Later.